Where is the starting point of the new Silk Road today? On this ancient road, people are searching for a brand new life. What is the force motivating this migration? It brought the secret of silk from China into Europe. It brought rice from East Asia to India. It spread different thoughts, ideas, and religions around the world. As time goes on, the face of the Silk Road has changed, yet the surging motivation within people's hearts has never faded. This is a brand new Silk Road. This is a brand new story on the Silk Road. Tongxin, a little county in western China, one of the poorest regions in the country. Tongxin has the tradition of trade since ancient times. It was once a town along the ancient Silk Road. Now, it is a settlement of the Hui tribe. Today is Tongxin's weekly market fair. 23-year-old Kang Xiaodong of Hui ethnicity has come with his mother to make purchases for the upcoming special gathering at home. Give us a discount. Bird flu's going around, it's already cheaper. <laughs> it's cleaned up. 2.5 kilogram, 47.60. Make it $47. Let's go, all right, let's go. Kang Xiaodong is a student at the Arabic language school. The young man is most curious about the world outside. <coughs> Have you washed your hands? <sighs> Sweet. Add some salt. Add a little salt. This is, in fact, the farewell dinner Xiaodong's mother is making for him. He is the youngest child in the family and has just graduated from the Arabic language school today. However, Xiaodong will be going far away after this dinner. He is going even further away to look for a job. This summer, Kang Xiaodong will be trying his luck in the outside world with his edge in language. Over 1,900 kilometers away from Tongxin is Yi Wu, located in the richest region in China. Early in the evening, as the clock chimes 5 p.m., vendors everywhere head to the city center. They spruce up the main street as quickly as possible. Commerce is the source of life of this city. Over a decade ago, Yi Wu was first discovered by merchants coming from the Silk Road. There was a rush to get in, as people discovered the abundant and cheap supply of goods here. As some people created legends of wealth here, some also came to fulfill their dreams. 
On the west of Yi Wu, the city of dreams, a battle is in full swing. This match is literally a mini World Cup. Faces of different ethnicities can be found on both teams. At this moment, the young blue team is leading by two to nil. Ozkan, captain of the red team, came from Turkey and once played in the professional league in Europe. Now he's doing his best to turn things around for his team. Obviously, though, the football pitch is no longer Oskan's stage today. In downtown Yiwu, Oskan and his wife Zara are welcoming guests from all around on their new stage. It is a Turkish-style Muslim restaurant, his new battlefield. End of 2009, I arrived to Yiwu. And uh, before I come here, I didn't know about you or nothing. When I arrived to, uh, to from airport, have a taxi first, it impressed me about uh, welcome uh, you trading city. And that impressed me, why trading city? Here lies the answer. Yiwu International Trade City, the largest commodity wholesale market in the world. It covers an area of 4.7 million square meters, almost the size of 70 standard football pitches. It attracts 400,000 foreign businessmen every year. The Silk Road, connecting the East and the West, is making a comeback. Yiwu has undisputedly become the new starting point of this modern Silk Road. Whatever you can think of can be bought here. Yiwu International Trade City offers 1.7 million different kinds of merchandise with almost 60,000 vendors. Some have estimated if one were to stay two minutes at every stall, it would take a year and a half to walk through the entire commercial center. Businessmen come to China from afar. Only this international trade city can satisfy their imagination to the fullest. How much is this, boss? This is 48. 48? Medhat is a Palestinian businessman who runs a trading company in Iwu, helping domestic businesses purchase merchandise. Medhat has lived in China for 10 years and is familiar with everything in this city. However, when he first came to China 10 years ago, Iwu looked completely different. The first time I come to Iwu, I see some foreigners only, not too much. But no have many Arabic customers or from uh, West Lang. From 2002 until 2012, every day have a new things in Iwo City. Every day will be gone. More and more people are heading towards this city. Today, Yiwu has 1.5 million migrants, three times that of the local population. What do you want? What are you doing? Kang Xiaodong is one of those migrants as well. He has been in Yiwu for two months now. Xiaodong and a few classmates rented a place at Shanko village on the edge of the city. Over 8,000 Ningxia migrants also live there giving Xiaodong a mild sense of home. For these young people, the hardest thing is looking for job opportunities. Kang Xiaodong is fortunate. A week ago, he got a job with a zipper distributor in International Trade City. On the other hand, the two classmates who came with him, Ma Xu and Ma Jian, are still looking for jobs. Today, they have also come to the international trade city. Hello. I saw your notice outside recruiting salespeople. I'd like to see if you are hiring guys. 
No, not guys. I stocked this up for my friend. Could you call and ask for me? That doesn't sound right. Guys, we already have a guy. We want a girl. Will you be hiring guys? For sales, I mean? Ewu's development gave young people from the poor western regions of China employment opportunities. This city needs up to 10,000 Arabic translators every day. Those from Ningxia make up the main source of translation in Yiwu, but jobs are not as easy to find as one might imagine. Sit down, sit down. What kind of company are you looking for? Over at the International Trade Center. The Trade Center? On the first floor, they want girls at the store and the office as well. What chances are there for everyone else then? What about the guys? Our priority right now is to feed ourselves. That's the most basic. At the intermediate stage, we can think about how much we make a month or a year. Then at the advanced stage, we can think about how much more we can make. Say you made 50,000 this year, we can think about in how many years it takes to go from 50,000 to 500,000 or a million. We should open our own company, you know. You must think like that. Now I just want to gain more experience and make more money to start my own business. What should I do before I turn 28? What should I do at 30, my peak? What should we be doing at 40? Then we can retire before 50. Doing business is familiar territory for Xiao Dong. My dad used to be in the wool business. I have some background. I helped my dad with the wool business when I was 18. Now we have a few forklifts at the coal mine. We did it for a year and my older brother was the driver. That's it. But my dad had higher hopes for me. But my heart wasn't there. I want to have my own business at 30. It's much better than inheriting something from my parents. My ultimate goal is to build a factory in Ningxia. Every entrepreneur in Yiwu hopes to have luck on their side. But the city itself didn't make its name in history overnight either. In 1982, Yiwu constructed its first center and opened up its market. Back then, it was just an outdoor commodity distributing site. In 30 years, Yiwu miraculously became the most internationalized city in China and the starting point of the new Silk Road in the East. Now, Kang Xiaodong and his classmates are standing at a new historical moment. The Silk Road hasn't disappeared. In this place of dreams, countless people face the infinite large world directly for the first time. It is people like them who make up the foundation of a brand new age. At the intersection of Asia, Europe and Africa, the geographical center of the world, there once walked camel troops across the desert. It is the Arabic world. At the mouth of the Persian Gulf is a city acclaimed as the pearl of the Arabic world. It is a desert city. As the blazing summer heat gradually recedes, the even hotter travel season begins. This is Dubai. Tell us the story of this place, its history, the Arabic culture and traditions. Back in the beginning, this Arabic country was just a small backwards country. However, one day, oil was discovered. In Dubai's case, there is very little oil. Most of the oil lies in Abu Dhabi. It takes up 70% of the area of the entire UAE. Then we talked about going to Abu Dhabi. Wang Lu, 23 years old, a fresh graduate from university. Today is her first time being a tour guide. She is working hard.
industry, the Chinese are becoming a major force in individual consumption. Let me see. Candid shots? Look at this one. Doesn't it look like yes. a star? Yes. <laughs> this shop is nice too. This shop sells things made in Italy. This shop is... I think quirky shops are better. Yes. This is... It's, it's to soak in the water to drink. What is it? Gelatin? Compared to being a tourist guide, Wang Lu has a more important job. Shopping guide. To these Chinese who have become rich quickly, Dubai is a shopping paradise. While some people are enjoying top quality consumption and service, others are searching far and wide for opportunities and fortune. Let me take one more for you. One, two, three. One, two, three. In Dubai, there are over 2,000 Chinese tour guides like Wang Lu, yet demand still trumps supply. The Arabic world has returned to the center of this globalized trade network, and just like their ancestors once did, they are now busy transporting goods around the world. On the Silk Road, travelers follow the flow of trade to move in both directions between the east and the west. On the other side of the Persian Gulf, night falls upon Doha, situated across the Gulf from Dubai. The fish vendors set up stalls for the night market by the shore. There you can find the freshest fish, and what lies hidden is the most traditional way of life. Doha, the capital of Qatar, is the same as its biggest competitor in the Arabic world, in that it was also a small fishing port over a century ago. The city is filled with new construction projects. Bulldozers drive into the once calm and peaceful Persian Gulf. Qatar has remained the country with the highest GDP growth rate for the past 10 years. After hosting the Asian Games in 2006, this will become the new stage for the 2022 World Cup. As it attracts attention and investment, the people in Qatar believe what really gave the country life is talent. The Pearl, Qatar, Doha's artificial island and the most expensive residential area. Milutinovic, former head coach of the Chinese football team. Today, Milutinovic has a guest coming to visit, international chess grandmaster Zhu Chen. Zhu Chen is Milutinovic's neighbor, and although she doesn't know much about football, the two often sit together for a chat over a cup of tea. We play, we win the Maldives 9-1. Ah. Good. Have you been in Maldives? But yes, yeah. oh, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I like this. This is yours. This is mine, and they have their third. Militinovic and Zhu Chen are both new residents of this city. In 2006, Qatar began preparations for the Asian Games and opened its doors to special talents, and Zhu Chen officially represented Qatar in the Asian Games. Zhu Chen has traveled along the Silk Road and walked into the kingdom of a thousand and one nights. On this long journey, it has always been her hands holding the chess piece to her destiny. International chess is Zhu Chen's lifelong career and it changed her life. Through chess, she met her Qatari husband and began a most dramatic journey. When I was little, I should say everything went quite smoothly. Then I chose this marriage for myself. Over a decade ago, Qatari law didn't allow their nationals to marry foreigners from non-Muslim countries. Zhu Chen's husband sought help everywhere he could, and finally, with special permission from the prince, they were married. She stepped on Qatari soil for the first time. It was in the hottest months of July and August, 
when the outdoor temperature was in the 50s and when people only came out in the mornings and evenings. Actually, the first time I came here, it was around this time too, around July or August. To be honest, though we were already married then, we were still deeply in love. So the first time I came to Doha, it really didn't feel that hot. At that time, Doha only occupied this part, the area by the sea, and neither Katara nor the Pearl existed then. Our house was also much smaller than the one we have now. Six years after they got married, Ju Chen finally stopped living separate lives from her husband and gained Katari nationality. For the first time in her life, she experienced the joy of reunion and the sadness of parting simultaneously, as well as the solitude of moving abroad. In the beginning, I couldn't adapt very well. I only realized I was abroad. When I was pregnant with my first daughter, my activity zone became quite restricted, and I didn't have any friends, so I was quite lonely then. I had the idea that if I were to die someday, would I be buried here? It felt so surreal to me. As Ju Chen was missing home, far away in China, a city was saving up power to spread its influence to the entire world. This is Yiwu Freight Station. Over 30,000 tons of goods are sent out from here every day all over the world. Businessmen only appear where there are opportunities. Today, Yiwu is the target of businessmen from various countries, especially Arabic businessmen. Medhat traveled from far away Pakistan to Iwu. After overcoming language, life, and cultural barriers, he is working hard in this foreign city to build his new kingdom, a kingdom built on trade. Every year, Medhat's company undertakes over 200 shipping containers. He often has to work late into the night. Medhat is a father of six, but hasn't been able to find suitable international schools in Iwu. Two years ago, his wife had to return home with their children. I every day have call with them, and sometimes I sure I I need to see him, must to see him. Sometime when he finish the school like holiday every family stay together so that moment is i feel not nice i feel very difficult i thinking too much must have one way i bring him to china or we go back to my country medhat has lived in yiwu for 10 years he is familiar with every prosperous sight and light in this city the lines between his hometown and this foreign town have long been blurred some stops on the Silk Road are brief delays, while some are life-changing. However, as one goes along, no one will ever know if any given moment is a beginning or an end, a starting point or the finish line. In the international trade city where Medhat frequents, Kang Xiaodong has already started work at 9 a.m. His intelligence and hard work have won the approval of his boss. Xiaodong now makes 2,000 renminbi every month. After deducting living expenses, there isn't much left, but he doesn't mind. Xiaodong wants to get to know more major clients through work connections in preparation for the future. However, he has so far only been doing the most basic tasks and has yet to contact any important clients. Every day, Kang Xiaodong has something new to learn. He has to identify up to 1,000 kinds of zippers. To his surprise, 
One package can hold 2,000 zippers, yet the profit is only 20 renminbi. There are no Muslim restaurants in the trade city. To Kang Xiaodong, who is of Hui ethnicity, this is quite inconvenient. Thus, during lunchtime, he often makes himself scarce or makes do with a bowl of instant noodles. There are actually over 300 Muslim restaurants in this city, big and small, with flavors and styles from all over the world. However, these restaurants are too expensive for workers like Kang Xiaodong at the moment. <laughs> Ozkan's restaurant is about one kilometer from the international trade city. He and his wife Zara are both giving everything they have into this restaurant. Oskan must inspect the restaurant every day, organize the management and, of course, control food quality and purchase ingredients for the day. Today, Oskan and his wife have come to the food market to make purchases. He makes new discoveries at this Chinese food market almost every time he goes there. On the other hand, Three years as a restaurateur has given him ample experience. He now knows very well how to purchase ingredients that he'll be satisfied with. Something like uh, this one, no? Panza, 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 no? 2004 and five, I have friends, and we was joking. He told me, "Would you like to come to China?" I said, uh, "It's too far away. How can I go there? Because Europe is near, you know." Oska never imagined he would come to China one day, and even less that his athletic career would end so abruptly. A training accident resulted in an agonizing injury. It was his wife, Zara, who stayed by his side at that time. It was really terrible. That time he is very sad because he doesn't know what will happen in the future. <sighs> So I was 32 years old. To be fit, I need at least one and a half, two years. I will be 34. After 34, what can I do? As Oskan was lost and floundering, his older brother, who was doing business in Guangzhou, suggested he open a restaurant in Yiwu. Oskan was hesitant. He was reluctant to leave the football pitch, and he didn't know how his wife felt about that. Before, I already told him, I cannot come to Netherlands. You must come to Turkey. I don't want to go abroad. He is telling me like a joking. I said, what do you think we can go to China? I say, OK, let's go. <laughs> I didn't tell him this one, <laughs> but I was very happy inside. Because, you know, I love him a lot. Every time he go to play, they are running, they are crashing. Really worry about this one. And I'm thinking, OK, we will have a regular life. It's more better for us. Ozkan and Zara began their new lives in Yiwu. Unlike Turkey, doing business here requires connections with many people. Today, they have already integrated into this city and have more and more new friends from all around the world. Like Ozkan and Zara, Many people plan to start new lives in Yiwu. There are currently about 13,000 Muslims from around the world living here. And every Friday, they will emerge from various places and gather together. This is the Yiwu Mosque. These Arabic businessmen followed in the footsteps of their ancestors to this place. At this moment, in this city in eastern China, Muslims with different mother tongues and skin color gather together. Medhat is also at the mosque.
It is a most familiar sound. From their hometowns to Yi Wu, Arabic businessmen have left their marks across all the ages. The Silk Road, which spans Europe and Asia, and once connected China and the Roman Empire, is awakening. This road of trade will traverse even wider horizons. Humans have never stopped migrating along the Silk Road. Individuals came together to become partners. Countries came together to become allies. Time came together to form history that never stops. Medhat is expanding his kingdom. Wang Lu is embracing the unknown. Kang Xiaodong is still pursuing the dream of entrepreneurship. Zhu Chen is stuck between going forward and moving back. When she first arrived in Qatar, Zhu Chen went through a long time of confusion. However, life often brings pleasant surprises and change. <laughs> With the birth of her two lovely daughters, her life gradually changed. Catch up. See if you can catch up with your sister. I can't. Ju Chen plays tennis with her daughters every week. The balance of her life has unconsciously shifted from chess to her family. In the beginning, everything was about my career. My whole life was centered on chess. Then, after I had my children, I started thinking about how much time to spend on my children how much time to put into training, and how much time to take care of my family. I was very conflicted too at first, because I love chess as well, but at the same time, if I spent a lot of time on chess, I would miss seeing my children grow up. Now what troubles Ju Chen the greatest is her children's education. Horse. Rabbit. Little Red Rabbit. She plays her two daughters' Chinese teacher. Moon. Moon. The children may be more confused over where they belong when they are growing up, whether they are Chinese or Qatari. When she was little, she'd play with her neighbors and they would think of her as a foreigner and say, look at this foreign child. What did we say then? We told her, yes, you are half Qatari and half Chinese because your mom and dad came together from countries far apart. That's why you have excellent genes. That's why you are very smart. We make her feel proud of it now to say that she's from two countries. Don't laugh. Playing chess taught me a way of thinking. You would prepare, and when you have a choice, you have to make it, to choose one path or the other. Nothing is perfect. That's how it is. Actually, Doha is the same too. I don't think any country in this world is perfect, nor is any city. So wherever you are, you should look for its good side and try to live happily. To tour guide Wang Lu, 
Everything about Dubai is still fresh and new. After a day of work, it is already nine at night. Where are you? Oh, come and hang out with you. Where are you guys? Wait for me. I'm coming. Don't leave. If you leave, you're dead. If you ditch me, you... Wang Lu lives in the Old Streets area in Dubai, in Murshid Bazaar. Eight months of living on her own has made a difference in this young girl. I've changed a lot. I am bolder, I guess. I was so timid back in China. When we saw a foreigner, my dad would say, go and greet him. No. My dad would say to the foreigner, hello. And the foreigner would say, hello. And then my dad would say, welcome to Chengdu. Yeah, I can give you a photograph. Yeah. Photo? Yeah! Yes. Yeah, it's a magic. One, two, three, smile! <laughs> you overdid it in this picture. You overdid it. Zhao is, is ferocious. Exchange Zhao, it with hers. Show us. Yes, exchange them. Where is that Trust ferocious me, it one? Isn't here. You're not my bro, Zhang. This, yes, this is a picture of us. We went out with some classmates and ran into someone from my hometown. This was on the subway. This was on the night cruise. Take a close-up shot of it. We were playing cute, so shameless. Why did you take mine? This is hers. Hurry up, exchange it. When I first came here, I thought I wanted to get rich. Now I don't think that anymore. Now I just want things to be simple. After I started working, I realized making money isn't as easy as I thought. I should just work hard and do a good job. Family and friendship are more important to me. Dubai, a traditional Islamic emirate, and an international open port. This city that keeps building skyscrapers and creating a luxurious facade has attracted tens of thousands of workers from the Indian subcontinent and more and more Chinese. Of Dubai's two million residents, migrants make up 1.8 million. These foreigners who traveled here from far away are working with the locals to create the legend of prosperity in Dubai. In Yi Wu, Ma Xu, who left home together with Kang Xiaodong, still hasn't found a job. In these difficult times, it is their friendship that gets these two young people through. Get us a good song to sing. Here we go, Sahara Desert. The next day, the young men are up early. They have a full day ahead. Kang Xiaodong caught the 8 a.m. bus. He wants to open up shop before his boss arrives. Ma Xu and Ma Jian have come to the largest recruitment market in Yiwu. Ma Xu wants to try one last time for his future. He has decided that if he can't find a job today, he will leave. Kang Xiaodong makes a pot of Kung Fu tea every morning. It's a new habit that he's picked up since coming to Yi Wu. 
At that moment, Mashu has already made a few rounds at the recruitment market. Arabic. Talk to that manager. He's sitting right there. That guy with the small eyes. Go and search on our website. I've been looking every day. Do you speak English? I can speak a little English, but are there sales positions mainly working with Middle Eastern countries and Middle Eastern clients? Ma Shu is still being told to wait. Xiaodong, on the other hand, keeps doing packaging for his customers. Ma Xu has already visited dozens of companies to no avail. Sometimes I knock on doors from the third floor of Futian building, all the way up to the top floor, and from block A to block B. I'd comb the buildings for jobs. I have thought about how it's been fruitless after so many days and then just went home disheartened. Every night when I went to bed, I'd lie there and wonder why others could find a job here, and I just couldn't. Maybe I wasn't a good enough student. But then I'd think back, and I did very well in every aspect of school. So why is that? In the heart of the city, Medhat walked into the best Turkish barbershop in Yiwu. All the equipment here came from Turkey, and the prices are also high. Medhat doesn't come here often, but today is an important day. In Yiwu airport, Medhat waits anxiously for the most important people in his life. He has already found an international school in Yi Wu. Today, his wife and children will come back to him. Come to Dad. How have you been? Come here, come here. Baby, let me kiss you. Where did you come from? Did you come by plane? Are you all right? How are you feeling? Welcome. Are you tired? How are you? Good to see you. How are you feeling? Huh? Hey, give me a kiss, come on. Hmm? How are you doing? Oh, how's the baby? Is he sleeping? He was still sleeping just now, but now he's awake, huh? Let me hold him. Ah, oh, how are you feeling? He's asleep. <laughs> hey, let me hold him. How are you? Awake now, huh? That night, for the first time, the whole family is reunited. This is a blissful moment for Medhat yet also a common phenomenon on the Silk Road. Since ancient times, those who traveled on the Silk Road have been those brave enough to rebuild their lives in the wilderness. Over half a year later, it is winter in the cold north of China. Kang Xiaodong has been home for a while. Due to a family emergency, his family wanted Xiaodong to come home and take care of the business. This youngest child has now taken on the family burden. To Kang Xiaodong, starting his own business in Yi Wu might have been a failed venture. But that doesn't matter. It was his first step in growing up. He still has his precious youth. Those traveling on the Silk Road encounter countless partings and reunions. Their lives have all been changed 
more or less on this road of migration. Wang Lu grew up in Dubai. Ma Xu, who finally found a job, understood the importance of patience. Zhu Chen finds happiness and tranquility. Ozcan has a new business. Medhat is rebuilding his life on the new Silk Road. Be it ancient or modern times, the Silk Road is like a summons that lures people to faraway lands. The larger the city, the greater the attraction. This is the biggest stage. The larger the city, the greater the attraction. This is the biggest stage. I integrate not only my personal emotions, but the desires of the city. That's why society calls me Mr. Ren, Master Ren, an artist. Please stay tuned for The Silk Road, A Renewed Journey, Episode 8, Cities of the World.